In this video, we are going to show you some of the ways that you can control the navigation of platform entities in MACE. First, let's place a striker using the Mission Builder. Remember, platform entities, unlike sites and cultural entities, can move, and they'll be the focus of this video. There are two main states an entity can be in, intent or delta. Intent means that the platform will go through its intended route of waypoints. If we were to press play right now, the striker would face the next waypoint and not move. That is his default intent, to face the next waypoint and have a speed of zero. This is actually how all the ground entities default to. Aircraft, on the other hand, will have a default setting according to their aerodynamics. They will appear at a certain altitude and will begin flying at a certain speed upon starting the mission. We could give him a route speed, and upon playing the mission, the striker would move to the next waypoint. Since there is only one waypoint, he'll stop once he gets there. If we were to add another waypoint, the striker would cycle between them continuously. You can move waypoints and the entities at any time. The mission can be stopped or it can be running. If we had multiple waypoints, we can then create leg speeds. This is the speed that the platform will travel between waypoints. Also, we can create route speeds. They will be applied to all waypoints. There's a difference between using the entity control window for route speed and the waypoint properties window for route speed. If you set the route speed via the entity control window, that will be the speed for the entire route, overriding any speeds that you've just set. This is also the case if you set the speed in the Entity Platform Properties window. It is the same functionality. If you set it via the Waypoint Properties window, that will be the speed from the waypoint to the end of the route. Actions can also be assigned to each waypoint. In this example, the most likely to be used are Reverse, Loiter, Proceed To, and Stop. Reverse will reverse the order of the waypoints, making the entity return on the same path. Something to note, if you want an entity to patrol along a path, it is best to put reverse actions at each end. Otherwise, the entity will attempt to make a circuit of the waypoints. Loiter can be used to make a ground entity wait at a waypoint for a set period of time. For an aircraft, it'll make it go into a wheel. For a helicopter, it will command it to hover. Proceed to will make a shortcut, making the entity go directly to the waypoint specified. You can also use it to create a loop in waypoints. You can then clear the action to allow the entity to continue. Stop will halt the entity at the waypoint. It's important to have another waypoint pass this action, however. The entity will halt in the direction of the next waypoint. If you intend to have the entity stop and look in a certain direction, place the next waypoint in that direction. At any time, you can click on the heading line and drag it. This will switch the entity into the delta state, and the entity will move along its new course. Entities in Delta State have a white heading line. Also, they will have a symbol in the lower left corner of their icon. Lastly, there is an indicator in the Intent button drop-down menu. Think of Delta as a deviation from the Intent State. In this example, the striker has a new heading. He will keep driving along that course indefinitely. You can make any entity enter Delta State by setting a heading in the Entity Control tab or commanding a maneuver. A click of the Intent button and the striker will return to the pre-planned course and speed. 
There's some extra features you can use while your entity is in tent mode. The Start Orbit tool will rearrange the waypoints into a racetrack orbit. The Cycle Waypoints button will skip the navigation to the next waypoint. The Reset Waypoint button will return the waypoints to their default.